<laughs> I, I know that statement. <laughs> Did you just call me? Yes. Okay. Are you locking us in? Do the doors snap yes. shut? <laughs> <laughs> yes, no one can enter. That's right. All right, well, uh, what I have, Bob, do you want to be the, because John will here tonight. Okay. Do you want to be our chair? Uh, I'm going to start the meeting. Oh, okay. The meeting is complete. Oh, it's Chair Seward, if you'd like to start to call it order. Um, call the oh, meeting order. Seconds, sorry. Yep. Give Renee ten seconds. Is he going to wave at me through the window? <laughs> Everyone, check their mics. Oh. I guess he Mine's good, yeah. I know my lights on. Snap it. Oh, there you go. Okay. I'm calling to order the meeting, the uh, April 22nd meeting of the Historic Review Board. Uh, we're starting a work session at 6, at 6, 17 in the evening. Members present. Members present. Cynthia Toll. Jonathan Stone. And Bob Seward. Staff, Christina Robertson Gardner. All right. And the staff, you have a report. Yes. So uh, we have some projects coming up in the next month with Preservation Month. Uh, as you recall in our work plan, we have the Preservation Month photo contest, which uh, behind you is our poster for this year. We presented it to the City Commission, both Karen Morey and myself, Karen Morey is with the Clackamas County Historical Society. We presented it at last week's City Commission meeting. Uh, it will go live on May 1st to accept, uh, and you can upload your photos, up to three photos per um, participant entrant. And uh, the prize category is the same as the year before. They've been graciously uh, been sponsored by Citizens Bank. And Old Oregon Photos will be printing the photos. Um, uh, the goal is to have, it's open from May 1st to June 15th. And then after June 15th, we, um, I'll be asking for two um, volunteers from our Stroke Review Board to be on the judging committee, which will also be, um, this is a blind judging, and will be involved with, as well as, um, uh, two members on, of the Clackamas County Historical Society. Uh, we'll go through the blind voting and the uh, winners will be announced in the July City Commission meeting. And so we have a lovely thing where the, they have the printed photos and everyone comes and the youth and teen winner is really fun and the adult winner and then Mayor Neely shakes their hand and it's a fun 15 minutes at the July City Commission meeting. Uh, what we're going to be doing soon, we've done some preliminary press releases, but it's kind of starting May 1st, we'll be pounding the pavement and putting these flyers up and doing as much as we can with um, working with the schools as well as um, as many organizations. So you will, you should have been on um, one of the press releases that I sent out last week. Um, I'll probably send one out again on May 1st. Um, so please feel free to forward those on to your contacts uh, uh, so we can um, make this a third year even better yet. So very nice about the Preservation Good. Month photo contest. And just to remind everybody that this year's theme for National Trust Preservation Month is a new age of preservation, embark, inspire, and engage. So we want people to embark into journeys in Oregon City, look at uh, buildings and landscapes that inspire you, engage with your community by doing this photo contest. So it's not just structures, but it's also cultural landscapes and things uh, that um, pr provide a, a heritage context to Oregon City is the theme of the Preservation Month photo contest. So that will go on next month. The second um, big item we do for Preservation Month is give out the Ruth Powers Preservation Award every year. And we do that for, it can be for a project or a person or both. We've done that before. Uh, I sent out a call for 
um, nominations, and I only received one. That was mine? That was Cindy's. So what I'd like to do, I'm going to um, send out the voting, uh, but we will need to be moving forward on that within the next week, and then I will let the... Um, it, and if you do have um, anybody else, let me know in the next day or two, and I'll add that onto the nominations. So where else do you get nominations from besides us? This, this is an award by the board. Oh, yeah. so yeah. we better get busy. You get better get busy. Um, so we don't have nothing has to be decided tonight, and you know it's done by a, a, a voting, so it's not a collusion of you know. Uh, but what I um, it will be determined in the next week because I need to contact the property. They have, contact the person who will be uh, winning the award and that gets awarded at the May I believe 7th planning or city commission hearing once again Doug Mayor Neely will present the award um, and we can have we, it like many years past we've done multiple awards it could be for a project or a person or both but if we can only come up with one award this year we will only have one award so this has to be for activities that occurred it's for activities year? either activities that have occurred in the last year for projects or it is to honor um, kind of uh, a uh, the commitment or um, products of a person over a kind of a time period, a recognition of their their efforts. So we've had uh, last year we had Denise McGriff winning for to, to honor her both her work at the National Trust stage and as well as the McLaughlin Neighborhood Association land use chair and her past um, work here as a staff person. But we had a project, which was the duplex on uh, 6th Street. So it was a project in a person last year, which was the rehab of a 1920s uh, kind of a what Mediterranean, was it? Mediterranean uh, uh, stucco duplex. That was uh, the award for last year. So it can be for infill new construction. It can be for rehab of an existing historic landmark. Um, it's usually a project or a person. So um, we, we yeah, feel free, you don't have to say it here, but feel free to forward on any people in the next day or two, and I'd be happy to add those to the nominations. Uh, and then you'll, you'll see a pretty quick vote time coming up. Uh, that's really all I have for the um, Preservation Month update. We'll also, uh, like always, do the Preservation Month proclamation before the Ruth Powers Award in May. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. <laughs> Silent crowd. Okay. So we had uh, some discussion a couple of meetings ago about projects. I was wondering if you could tell us where we are with uh, one was a a brochure kind of project. Oh, for the CLG grant. Right. Yes. Um, Right. So we've received approval from the certified lo for a certified local government grant, and that went to three pro products. One majority of it was for the Ermitinger House mm -hmm. restoration. That was seventeen thousand dollars. Then, for the most part, we had m uh, money to help with the mailings for property owners. Mm -hmm. um, we'll do a new kind of welcome wagon packet to property owners. All the five hundred that own designated properties, uh, and then we have the third one, which is. Uh, to put to, uh, to hire a graphic artist to put to, a graphic designer to put together information sheets on the elevator Carnegie Library and promenade in honor and celebration of their imminent national register listing so I do not have have gotten any farther than that but we have finally have the Shippo grant signed so that that's as far that's a step farther but the goal I think is both of these to happen in the summer both the um, Welcome wagon packet and the uh, flyers, and the goal is to have it's a two be like a two page or eleven by seventeen folded, so really easy to replicate. Mm -hmm. PDF, we could just keep you know printing those off forever and have them at different places in the city. Um, the five hundred designated property owners are they on the national register? So these are for our locally designated properties. Locally, so mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. yeah. So if you have a sign on your house, you're probably... Yeah, though there, there are people who don't have signs that are designated. Because that signs is really just a... That was right, a but value. I'm just saying, yeah. Uh, the $17,000 for the Ermatinger, how it's going to work is, you know, this Ermatinger uh, rehab project is going to... Well, I'll give you an update on that, actually. Uh, because we're receiving a chunk of money through the... Community Development Block Grant through Clackamas County, they have some federal requirements that they actually have to be 
uh, the processor of the kind of contract project, even though they're just a piece of the puzzle, but there's strings attached because it's federal money. So we're working really closely, both Scott Archer and Denise Kai in parks and community development, myself, Maya Foti, if you remember her, she was the architect that was hired mm -hmm. with ARG Architects, and she did that just exquisitely in-depth, wonderful plan last year. She's been held on, and she's going to be kind of the project manager on the architect side. Uh, we are. We just finished off doing an um, RFQ for contractors, so they have to meet pretty stringent requirements to show background in historic preservation contracting work. And we had three firm, or four firms actually, that um, showed up to the meeting last week, met the qualifications, and are allowed to go forth and bid. So they're going to move forward and look at the plans for the rehab and be able, they're going to, within the next couple of weeks, they're going to submit their bid. So we can look at, we've pre-qualified, but we can also look at, so it's not just money too. So it's a, it's, it's a really good way of making sure that those four firms are absolutely qualified to do the work and absolutely meet the secretary standards and at the highest quality and the highest level. Uh, I think the main crux of this year's contract work is because the Irma Tinger is going to be lifted and the a new full basement full height basement is going to be put in to remediate remediate a lot of some of the structural issues with the previous fill that was in the previous building when they took the police um, admin building out which was used to be in that location they put fill in and that had some of the re some of the reasons why the Irma Tinger house was shifting how it was because we had unsubstantiated fill in some of that area mm -hmm. and um, there may be some of the, some of that basement may still be left uh, so that's some of the goal is to to address the structural concerns is to pour basically a full basement where all the hvac and storage will go but li basically lifting the house up pouring the full basement bringing it back down no change in outside appearance nice. though there will be a small outside stair entrance that's the one new change for a little stairwell on the side back uh, there's a very tight window when that needs to happen, kind of late July to mid-September right. is when that basement. So it's like, if that's the date, then everything, there's pre-work that needs to get done, and then there's a lot of stuff that can be done post. So we're really looking at kind of like a late June, early July through late November is our construction kind of time period for the project. It also sounds like there was a, there was a gap in, um, the funding, um, so we had maybe 90% of the project funded. So we were looking at, okay, well, can we do almost everything, but then have, you know, the goal was to get the shell done and all the major work this year, and then if there were smaller parts of the project, we can kind of work on that this next year. But we've actually found out that one of the community development block grant projects fell out, and we can have access to that money. That's up to $150,000. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. So there will, but that money won't be available till after July 1. So there'll be like a Schedule A and Schedule B. So it's a little complicated, but I think we may be able to get the whole thing. Oh, that'll be so good. Ended. So we're very excited about that. That's very good. Going to lift that whole house up in the air. So sometime in late July through September, you'll see the house lifted. I'm going to go take a picture. And the other big Come thing is we're moving, you know, just to remind everybody, it's been a while. The, you know, one of the main fixes structurally was to take the staircase, which was changed about 100 years ago. It used to be that you'd walk in, and today you can go straight up the stairs. Well, it used to be flipped, right? Mm. So you used, you'd walk in, the stairs coming back, the, the back of the house up. And so when they switched it, um, and most likely when they moved it up to its second location, that kind of precipitated a lot of those structural issues, and the solution got a lot easier when you brought that staircase back to its original yeah, configuration. Nice. So um, that's the part of the plan is to bring that back. And so they're, they're looking, because this, the house has been modified so much, um, but they're really doing as much as they can for that main volume to bring it back to that 1844 time period, yeah. as much as they can. Mm -hmm. And then the, that back addition that um, really is a 20th century addition, that's going to be where the ADA bathrooms are, a small kitchen. That's going to be allow the um, ADA ramp will come out of there. That's going to be a lot more modif be able to be a lot more modified. So We're looking at that that front volume to be more brought back to the 1840s. So there's not going to be an elevator for ADA no, people no, to no, get no, to no. the second floor. No, 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 it's a, it's still a house museum. It is still built to that occupancy. So that they're exempt from that. Yeah. All right. So, but you are have full access to the ground floor. I see. Absolutely.
So there are, there are ADA, going to be some ADA concessions, but not a lot, surprisingly. It needs to be for ground floor access. So uh, all these plans are available. Um, you know, they ha we have shown them online, and if you want to see them again, I'd be happy to kind of give you the link back. It's on past um, City Commission and Historic Review Board uh, presentations from previous years. Can't get it through the city's website? It, it, it's just not on our, like, a project page, but it's attached to previous electronic oh. agendas, and I could be happy to send you the link so you don't have to go okay. figure out which one it was. So I know Jonathan may not be as aware of, of where we are in that project, but that, you know, the Historic Review Board basically is, while they're not directly involved, you know, it's been a, a goal of this to stay kind of on the city's um, trajectory of how they're going to be working on rehabbing the house. And uh, people have asked if this triggers any historic review, and technically it doesn't because it kind of all the changes are on the inside right. and when you're done though I still probably will bring it up to the board this summer so you can fully review it at a full public hearing um, you know I don't know if we're gonna actually attach an HR number to it or it's just gonna be you know a full public review of it I'll have to figure out how we want to do that um, and it's uh, it, the expectation is we will be working with SHPO all the way through, so they will have a nice documentation letter uh, for our file and for everybody's knowledge that they believe this absolutely fits secretary standards. And more importantly, our you know our long-term goal is if there is ever a time when the Park Service can take this building over, which you know in 2004 it was going to go with the McLaughlin House, and we actually brought kept it back, which was probably the worst decision we've ever made as a city, but. Hindsight, <laughs> um, you know, if there's ever a scenario where it could be brought back to the Park Service, we want them to feel very comfortable with what happened during this rehab. So we're keeping Fort Vancouver in the loop. It could be that this is never taken over for financial and political reasons, but we don't want to be, if only, but we were more involved during this year, we would be. So we're just kind of crossing our uh, T's and dotting our I's on this with the Park Service. Do you track... Uh I'm thinking about the uh, <clears throat> Kenema House that came to the board last meeting, mm -hmm. and they were waiting for their geologic report. They have not turned it in yet. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So they have not turned it in. Uh, Ray Bell has turned his geologic hazard report in. He's currently getting being reviewed, and he's, that's the gentleman who has the house on Madison mm -hmm. below Waterbrook Park. So right. that has been noticed. Um, and our engineering division is working on that staff report. But the gentleman in Kinema has not turned his geologic hazard in. So, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So do we adjourn for a... Yeah, we can adjourn for dinner. And at 7 o'clock we have um, the alterations to Mike's drive-in. And it's really, we're just looking at the modification we Excuse me, your questions, so it, it should be pretty quick. Sure. But the applicant will be here at okay. 7. Okay. Adjourn for dinner. Thank you. You restarted. I uh, re uh, call the meeting back to uh, order for the work sessions. Um, and we will uh, hold a public hearing on PC 14042, HR 1404, modification of Mike's drive in, uh, previously known as HR 1314. And I have a statement to read. Uh, we will now commence public hearing on agenda item PC 14042, a request for approval of Mike's uh, modifications to Mike's drive in HR 1304. The criteria for approval of land use action contained in Chapter 17 of the Oregon Municipal Code. The proposed development must comply with applicable provisions contained in the City of Oregon City Com Comprehensive Plan. Generally, unless otherwise noted, if request is found to be consistent with the municipal code, it is considered consistent with the com comprehensive plan. If you wish to participate in the hearing, uh, including challenges or bias for bias or conflict of interest, you must complete the and sign the form located on the table in front of the room and deliver it to the staff. Uh, please do so immediately. The chair will only recognize those who have submitted a completed form. Uh, testimony will be taken in the following order. The applicant, testimony in favor, testimony in opposition, rebuttal by the applicant. When recognized by the chair, please come forward to the podium, give your name, address, and make your statement. All testimony, arguments, and evidence presented regarding this request must be directed to the applicable criteria or other criteria in the plan or land use regulation which the person believes the, to apply to that decision. 
Please address only the applicable criteria for the decision. Please do not repeat testimony. If you wish, you may choose merely to agree with the previous speaker's statements. An issue <laughs> which may be the basis for an appeal to the Land Use Board of Appeals shall be raised no later than the close of the, of the record at, at or following the final evidentiary hearing. Such issues shall be raised and accompanied by statements of evidence sufficient to afford the Commission and the parties an adequate opportunity uh, to respond to each issue. Failure to raise an issue accompanied by statements or evidence sufficient to afford the decision makers and the parties an opportunity to respond to the issues precludes appeal to the Land Use Board of Appeals based on the issue. Failure of persons to participate in public hearing, either orally or in writing, precludes that person's right of appeal to the City Council or to LUBA. Written testimony submitted prior to the hearing constitutes participation in the hearing. Failure of the applicant to raise constitutional or other issues related to the proposed conditions or of approval with sufficient specificity to allow the decision maker to respond to the issues precludes any action and action for damages in circuit court. Prior to the conclusion of the initial evidentiary hearing, any participant may, participant may request an opportunity to present additional evidence, arguments, or testimony regarding the application. The Commission shall grant such requests by continuing Continuing the public hearing pursuant to the standards contained in ORS 197.763. Uh, Do any of the board members have a conflict of interest or ex part contact regarding this application? No. 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 Who has visited the site? All of us, I think. Mike's drive in? I've seen it, drive okay. past it all the time. That, I, think that's a, I think that constitutes a visit. Uh, so I'm going to call the first uh, uh, testimony from the oh, applicant. Hold on, step report. Hmm? Staff report. Staff <laughs> report. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, it does say staff report here. Okay. And I just realized I want to apologize for the warping around instead of wrapping around. Uh, where we are tonight, um, you reviewed uh, the new construction for Mike's Drive-In last fall, approved it. Uh, if you recall, there was some um, modifications and conditions that were relating to the Monroe Street parapet, some extra findings related to the uh, metal material, and some additional requirements for the uh, change in width of the siding. Those all remain. So all the conditions from the previous historic review are still valid. What we're really looking at tonight is the modification to two parts of the application. And it was, it was just enough of a change that I felt it constituted a, a formal request for modification. I think if it just slightly moved, it probably could go through. Uh, but because they looked at wrapping that arcade uh, porch all the way around to the Monroe Street side, I felt like it um, it needed to uh, go in front of the board. So I'd like to kind of quickly go through the site plan and the two proposed changes. And tonight, when you when you make a motion, if you do approve the modifications, it know that these are two parallel and distinct applications. It'll be all the conditions related to the first one at 1304, and then any additional uh, approval or requirements you put on this. And so when an applicant moves forward with their development room site plan and design review, they'll be ready with any any of the conditions on either of them. So, uh, just to show you, the applicant was able to purchase the property next door, the open field, mm. and they're looking at slightly shifting the restaurant, and the offices to the south. So this, you can see, this area right here is now onto the other property, whereas before it was pretty much right on the property line. And they're looking at an opportunity to come back one day with uh, an addition. Of course, um, nothing tonight. Um, affects that they'll have to come back for a whole new application but they're just putting it here to give you a better understanding of why they're doing this and they're also concurrently going through a site plan design review and that, that site plan design review does not look at this addition they'd have to come back with a separate development review but what that does it allows them to kind of do a return on the porch and so i'm going to be going down and showing you Oh. This elevation does not change. This is the south elevation, just slightly moves on to uh, the property next door. But here we see the 7th Street elevation. Not much has changed here, except right here you can see kind of that turn at the corner. And then I'm going to go one more. And this is really what's different, as you see here. They had that step down 
and then um, which was required and then having this new arcade wrapped porch and so I wanted to I know Denise McGriff is here but um, what's not in your um, packet which is there uh, the neighbor association comments and I want to read the three sentences for HRB 1404 the McLaughlin Neighborhood Association has reviewed the proposed revisions to the previously approved <coughs> application submitted by Todd Freeman. The addition of the outdoor setting is appropriate as long as materials are compatible with the design guidelines. Moving the building eight feet to the east would allow the development to accommodate additional parking. So that's their comments related to the historic review. On mine, for staff, um, I see is this a continuation of the existing materials, the same um, the same conditions would be appropriate. I do not see any other additional conditions to have <coughs> so at this time I have a recommendation to approve as proposed with those two modified so I would like to open it up if the board has any questions for me I can answer them and then we also have the applicant and Miss McGriff has showed up tonight so put it back here any questions from the board you control the lights where you are? I tried to change them and they wouldn't change, they wouldn't change. I mean, I have my little one, but it's so much nicer seeing it. Uh, I will try again just a moment. Hmm. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Um, may we hear from the applicant? <clears throat> I'll probably let him answer most things, but the one thing I want to clarify that she said, the building, I believe, is shifting 10 feet, not 8 feet. Okay. Can we have uh, your name and... Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Todd Freeman. I'm the owner of Mike's Driving Restaurant. Mm -hmm. And the building actually is shifting 10 feet, not 8 feet, as uh, oh, she she proposed mm -hmm. or she said, um, and that's in the plans or whatever. What, what this corner does is this corner actually makes it a nicer corner area to where when people are walking up and down, they'll be sitting outside. There'll be more covered area for people to sit. I think it actually presents a better... Um, a better looking building, a complete, rather than just having an awning kind of sticking out front. I think it'll make the corner look a lot better. Um, it's th the purpose that um, was because we bought the property when we started this project. We tried to buy that property and he wasn't willing to sell it. Um, as we were getting ready to turn everything in to be complete, he came up uh, and wanted to sell it, which kind of stalled everything for a couple of months and it kind of changed our plans because of moving it and redesigning it and whatever. Um, and I don't know, I, I just think it's a better design and it's going to fit that corner a lot better. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hi, I'm Greg Creighton, the architect, 252A Avenue, Suite 300, Lake Oswego. Um, first, I'd like to point out that no materials have changed at all. Uh, all colors, all textures, all um, patterns are, are the same. We, <clears throat> uh, we shifted the building 10 foot to the south and we also pushed it a foot and a half to the, the back, uh, that would be north, northerly, um, to enlarge the depth of the, uh, the porch. It was eight feet before and as we started to look at it, we kind of went, wow, it's kind of tough to get by those tables mm -hmm. and uh, we wanted to Little more walkway there so it's now nine and a half feet deep was eight and uh, nine and a half feet uh, on the Madison Street elevation as well um, the parking lot was probably the most dramatic change uh, we were able to increase our landscaping and escape uh, further exceptions through the uh, municipal code because of that we were just shy of the required percentage landscaping and now we're over it so uh, that worked out well and uh, the parking just flowed so much better more spaces uh, better circulation okay any questions so there's there's no improvements to the new property that you bought other than moving time. the building now, I, I would like to put a couple more units on there mm -hmm. uh, but this is kind of like phase one <laughs> and this is a lot. To, I've never done a project like this. Let's get this one done before we uh, make it any bigger project. Sounds prudent. Mm -hmm. so. 
I do have a question for staff. If she could uh, restate the uh, conditions of approval from the last, uh, the fall application in regards to siding dimensions, uh, mm -hmm. exposure. I can find it because I'm just noticing that's slightly different in this drawing. Give me one second. And I have to get up here because I don't have access to my drawing. You do? Okay. Look at Denise. Is that it? Yes. Denise on the spot. All right. Uh, what we have is the three conditions of approval from the fall is the short step down Monroe Street parapet is out of scale and cannot be viewed as pedestrian friendly. Prior to supplemental building permits, the applicant shall redesign the parapet on Madison Street to include only one step down. And um, the applicant shall utilize smooth lap siding on all elevations of the building. The restaurant portion of the building shall utilize six inch reveal and the office portion of the building should utilize a four inch reveal. Three, the parapet on the restaurant portion of the building shall utilize smooth cement board lap siding of either four or six inch reveal. What we found out, and the reason for my question was that um, hardy plank is um, not available uh, in a four inch lap, but it is in a five. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would rather use uh, hardy plank throughout. I think the drawings now show cedar on the office portion because of that. I think it's, and this is where I wish Derek and John were here mm -hmm. tonight, but it, you, it's not that you use the five inch, but you do a four inch reveal. So you buy the five inch, but the actual but reveal the overlap between the lap is showing an actual four inch. Right. Right. Is that, yeah. is that the way you foresee it? To it would go to a four inch reveal even if it's five inch. With the uh, the hardy mm -hmm. uh, with a what four inch? Mm -hmm. With a five inch, you get a four inch reveal. You'd, you'd have a four inch reveal even with the five inch. Hardy. When you I, think I, I think my point was that uh, when I, I had a discussion with the Hardy uh, rep a couple of months ago at the Builder Show, and uh, at the time they they uh, you couldn't install it that way with four inch review, but <clears throat> but so he was saying you can do five. So you're asking for a five inch reveal instead of a four inch reveal? Correct. Have you looked at other um, cementitious uh, products besides Hardy plank? Um, no. So I know there's a couple other uh, manufacturers other out there. Manufacturers, yeah. If we, uh, you know, I have a thing about dimensions that are too close together, and four and six is great, but five and six is not so great. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'd, if we went with the five, I'd actually go bigger on the other, on the uh, restaurant section too. How would you guys feel about that? Or is that something you could approve? I'm thinking. <laughs> Uh, I think seven would be too much. I do too. Mm -hmm. um, I was unaware that this question would be asked, so I'm not really prepared. I mean, I think for the most part, we're looking at a four inch reveal as a more of a traditional um, reveal mm -hmm. for that type of architecture, and that mm -hmm. the office portion um, could be a little bit wider, but I don't, at the time. At my point, I would probably be deferring to the two people that are here tonight. So at some point, I, it'd be interesting to see what our public comment is from Ms. McGriff. Is there a way that you can check out other suppliers and see if you can come up with one and then sure. work What's, with you? One thing that can happen. Hardy's the predominant. I yeah. mean, they own the market. But One thing that can happen tonight, if you still, you know, we don't have to approve this tonight. I mean, we can we can continue to next month right, if we, we want to. If you really want to dive in and 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 kind of look into these, and since we're the, we have this you know, we have this application, we can modify. We can look at the different. Uh, knowing that if if whatever's decided tonight, you know, coming back, you got to come back again. So if if there's just if there's not consensus tonight, I mean, if there's consensus, we can write it in. Let's do it. But if there's not consensus, it may be worth it to kind of just give a preliminary vote yeah. on this, not finalize it, come back next month, and kind of work out the siding yeah. issues, and then we can mm -hmm. finally do a final decision. Yeah, that's I'd, like, I'd like to clarify one thing, that um, the builder, um, we kind of all had different synensis or different feelings when we left, and I wanted to verify this. I understood that the office building was supposed to be four feet, I mean four inch, 
Is that correct? And then four inch on the building, on the office, and then we could do six inch on the restaurant. Yeah. The question that I have is when you, um, I don't know if you have a back side of the restaurant, but the restaurant goes all the way around and halfway through, but actually the restaurant continues the whole back side. Mm -hmm. I was under you the- You can, if you want to scroll down, you can go- I think it's down. Actually, okay. one more, yeah. There we go. Okay, so I was under the impression the restaurant actually continues that whole back of the building. And I was under the impression <clears throat> that we would be able to do the um, the six inch on the restaurant and then the two sides that are exposed, the front of the office and the side of the office would be the four inch. Am I understanding that correctly? The way it is right now, the restaurant can be six inch. I'm sorry if I'm confusing. No, no, I, I just can't remember which is which. I know that the, we have two reveals. The, ki the kitchen is the whole entire back. That whole, everything you're looking at right there is restaurant and the upstairs windows that you see is our restaurant office and an employee's room. Yeah. Right. So that whole back part is restaurant. Mm -hmm. And it would look funny if you stopped in the middle of that building. Oh, no, building. no, no, I don't think and that's you, what that means. Well, I think actually, that actually, I did address that. I, uh, I put a large batten right down the center. You can actually see it in that drawing. And uh, that's where the siding breaks the... Uh, Are those at, is that at gray? I mean, is there, there's not a... I, no, there's no. Uh, there's no uh, depth. Plain difference. Plain difference. Even, okay. even the even the builder said it would be a lot better if we went six inch all the way across. It would make it a lot better and make it a lot smoother. Even yeah. with the batten in the middle, you would see the different. It would be so obvious. Yeah, it would it look funny. Yeah. No, so I just wanted to verify that well, we can do we can do six inch on the back side. That's what I understood. The restaurant portion, which is the back, the side, and the front, would be. Four. Six inch. Well, uh, of a greater importance is the color. They're not the same color. Right. Yeah. Right. They're not the same color, and they're not the same elevation. The, 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 you know, so that separates. That's the reason the I use the well. batten is that we have a color and a texture change. So there. your plan does show a four and a six. Christine, do you recall? Yeah, actually, I think there was an understanding that that it's to really think of the buildings, even though I know they're one interconnected building. Separate. Is, so that rear was to be the d a different siding. Right. Yeah. That's I mean, I, I think, remember. now granted, this, we're at a place now we can look at a modification, we're at a hearing, but I believe in the fall it was looking at, because the whole idea was to break up the massing right. and see these as two separate buildings aesthetically, right. even though they are two, one building structurally, yeah. right. but that the back. The back is just the same as the Even front. though the, it's a, you, I think you think of it as a different way. The restaurant is a use inside the office part of the the architecture so you have the office volume and then you have the restaurant volume right. and I know the kitchen is in the rest in the office volume right. notwithstanding we, this can we can look at it again but that was the intent of the of the uh, I I think, that's, yeah. that's, that's what, what we agreed well. to oh. yeah okay so so if, if it make if the <clears throat> question is uh, to, to frame is upon further review we're wondering if it, it because there's no change in plane um, in the and that rear elevation, and you really just have a batten that's separating it, and you have two different colors, mm -hmm. is what I'm hearing. So, is it or is the back all one color? No, no, I, I all believe one the color. back would be two different okay. colors. So, the question is, but, do you have a back with two different colors, and you have a batten separating it? There, you're wondering if you're, you're worried that putting two different sidings at that place with a batten I, I is too think, complicated. And that, that's a legitimate um, question. That, that would look a lot tonight. better being one, and also it's a cost savings <clears throat> the, yeah. you know, to be doing it. That's but, the biggest thing. Although it would look far worse if we uh, change colors on an outside corner. Yeah. Because uh, on, on that plane on the uh, east wall there, that would be the green. And then to change to white, no. It wouldn't, wouldn't look good. No. So I mean, more the idea is to break up the massing of these this one structure into two. So you can do it different ways. You can do it through color. You can do it through siding. You can do it through a little bit of change in projection. Which so, I well, honestly. Question, so we, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Honestly, the only the only thing that I see uh, the your reasoning for is cost, well, because but, because yes. I think mm -hmm. it would because the back of this structure is going to be visible. You know, it's not going to be like hidden by trees or anything like that. It's going to be visible. So I, I think that the back should should mirror the front. But if if it's if it's a total cost savings for you, it's going to 
mean a lot of money. Maybe we should table it until John and Derek are back and, and they can give some kind of advice to you about it. But I, but I think as it stands, it, it would look better to have it look separate, just like the front does, with those with those. Reviews. So I just I just checked um, with uh, um, Certainty has a similar product to Hardy Plank. Um, but the dimensions are the same, so their smallest size is five inch in terms of the. Um, yeah, now is that the material width or the? Uh, that's the, the exposure width. The, actually, I, that's the plank. So it's five and a quarter inches. So maybe Sorry. with the the lap, it would. It would be closer to four. Closer to four. Yeah, I think that's the idea. Is usually a five inch gives you a four inch reveal. That's that's fine then with me. I I I was in the impression that we were going to be stuck with cedar, and and that is a huge cost issue. So I. Yeah. If there's a product that we can, uh, a fiber cement product that we can get the four inch exposure at, we're, we're happy. Okay, so I believe you were, we're at this point. We have a question about um, the back reveal and whether uh, w you can continue the four inch all the way across or the four and a half or whatever it turns out to be. Um, we also have a question about uh, the reveal and whether you can make a four inch give or take a little bit. Um, with a different material. <clears throat> Otherwise, I think those are the only two questions left on the table. Is that, is that am I? I'm going to, yep. I'm going to retract my uh, discussion and question about the uh, five inch and seven or something like that. I'm happy with four and six provided we can use all fiber cement products. Right. Okay. So, so what, what happens if when you do it, what if it, what if it ends up showing four and a quarter? I don't, I mean, I don't know anything about building. If it shows, if, well, it, if it's, if it's not a whole lot more, it's like okay. maybe a skosh, like yeah, a yeah. quarter of an no, inch. No, a quarter of an inch no, wouldn't bother me. Show. Okay. It, may, it doesn't bother me. It may have bothered the people. We yeah. haven't heard from yeah. other uh, people that would, would like to talk and, tonight. So yeah. Yeah. we do have some public hearing. Public so do you have any other uh, questions or issues you don't want to raise and then we'll hear from other folks here and then uh, we'll maybe have you back. Okay. It's okay with you, Todd. I'd rather have them delivery tonight as as drawn because uh, well, as drawn, yes, definitely for mm -hmm. for the well. If addition. you go as as drawn, that leaves the six and the four on the back. Reveal. And you can right. get couldn't they get started? I believe me, I wrestled decision. with that issue on the color on the and the texture, right. and, and the batten was the simplest solution I right. could come up with. I I'm not a fan of changing colors on the outside corners, and I'm. I'm not really a fan of changing colors and textures on the same plane right. either, but this is how yeah. I do it. Okay. Um, I'd like to hear from any testimony, either pro or con. Denise? Okay. I want to ask you whether it's pro or con. <laughs> it's in the middle. Anyway, Denise McGriff representing the McLaughlin Neighborhood Association. It is too bad you do not have a whiteboard in here because I could draw the reveal. <laughs> it's, it's, it's exactly as you said. Yeah. It's when you overlap it, it will make a four inch. You have the one on the top and the one on the bottom and then you have four all the way up. It's, right. it's, it comes real close. You can do it with a six inch piece. You just end up having a little bit more on that lap. But Well, sometimes these preformed things yeah. have the guide, guide where the second one is, goes, yeah. it's prescripted yeah. each one, so you can't really fudge it. Yeah, I just looked at a building about a half an hour ago that has Hardy on it, and they have a, they have like an eight inch, but they put their lap at the very edge of each piece instead of bringing it down a little more. So what did they do about the gap? Just there wasn't any gap on it. No, I mean, it wasn't pre no, prescribed? No, no. That was particular one wasn't. <clears throat> it was just plain straight. Okay, so the issue left on the table then is the back review and the massing. Yeah, I, I don't think it, I really, as she, Christina said, I don't really think you have an issue. It's, I guess the thing is, you know, looking at the back of this, you have the lower building and you have the taller building. And I guess my understanding was, is the building to my right was going to be six and the building to my left was going to be four because that's the office building. It doesn't matter what uses inside of it whether it's the restaurant right. portion or whatever it was just they were two you know one building with two separate things so i'm not understanding why there's a issue unless it's as, as you said cindy uh it's the cost it's costing but i'm assuming the building to the my left is all going to be one color and the building to the right and one reveal right is going to be the other color mm -hmm. as we saw 
in the other review. In the other review, yes. John? I'm just trying to visualize um, the the trim piece. So then, then you're just going to butt to the trim piece on both sides. Yes. Um, is is that design element going to it's going to read as the same building? Um, it's going to it's going to be like the duplexes you see that want to look like, or the fourplexes that want to look like different. They, different, you know, different buildings, uh, dwellings, mm -hmm. and they paint them and they do different things on them. It's going to look like that. It's going to be a, it's going to be one building, but it's going to look like two common wall it's buildings right together. Yeah. The only other thing, you know, we we didn't have any objection to the uh, to shifting the building ten feet. It you know it, it's going to be great that that lot's going to get some use out of it and. In the future, if Todd should expand, that would be terrific. And I think uh, you've got an option for some outdoor seating. The uh, there'll be a little more red there than you know what we originally had looked <laughs> at because <laughs> you know we weren't real thrilled about the metal, but we were willing to compromise about that. So I think other than you know other than saying that that the neighborhood is is very anxious that this project gets started and that we're very supportive of it uh, you can make your decision tonight I think it just gets them moving down the road a little further we already have about two other projects that are well we don't know what the heck's happening with them and they're sitting there so we want to do everything we can to support what they're proposing and, and move forward and we have as Christina stated we have submitted some comments for design review but that's not under your purview but it's somewhat related mm. has to do primarily with the alley so we will that'll be in the record for that particular portion of the, the hearing but you know, let's go let's move forward if we can thank you okay thank, thank you. you so <clears throat> we can tonight move forward with the with the modifications as proposed formally in the in the modifications page and approve it as designed, which would be the four inch and the six inch, mm -hmm. uh, and we can be done with the deal. Uh, if not, we'll, we'll not need to have another proposal for a modification that would make the four inch cr all the way across the back reveal, right? Well, we're at a public hearing tonight, so that we can we, add an additional condition tonight if we it could. wants to, if, if there is consensus to move forward with that. Okay, all right. Um, I got it. You said four inch across. I was saying. Todd, you have to go up there. <laughs> <laughs> what she said you said four inch all the way across right I was saying that the six inch was or the restaurant and it was all rest I was saying six six inch, inch all the way but across. I'm I'm okay with it, as long as we can get four inch I was under the impression until right now that we were gonna have to put cedar siding because of the four all inch. around it oh, because of the four inch and if it was cedar siding that is just yeah. that, it's a very big expense that is yeah. so yeah. I was under the impression, so I was saying the restaurant portion is the back half of that whole building, right. and I would like to do six inch. However, if there's other material, I'm okay with the four and six as shown. Okay, but thank you. Um, you're the architect and the builder. Uh, can you make that four inch work? Yeah. <clears throat> By the way, that uh, that batten is ten inches wide, so it's a pretty It'll substantial cover. piece yeah. of trim. <clears throat> okay. Um, <clears throat> Thank you. So I just have a question in terms of matter process. So, if my quick little iPhone research um, to f is isn't correct, um, yeah. So here here we are. I, I, let me give you process. I, there are different ways you could go about this tonight. You could one um, a, move forward to approve the modifications as proposed tonight, and not make any other. Um, findings for the siding just continue with what is recommended in the fall you could make a modification approve the modifications tonight and then amend the siding recommendation in this hearing and have an additional condition for this modification that you're modifying the condition from last fall or th and approve that tonight whatever modification you want to write or three you could kind of give an initial you know, indication of how you would how you would vote on the 
modification just for the help of the applicant so they know. Um, and then keep the record open till next month to just further dive into the spe specifics of the the siting if you want to wait and get more information from both the applicant. Okay, and I can't remember. So those are kind of three mm -hmm. ways you can go to tonight. I can't remember if the modification for the siding was in the proposed. No, no, it's not. That you're came a, later. That okay. came tonight. So the you are in a public hearing and you can't address that tonight. Yeah, I, well, I, I think we should... Is there a way to do one and then say if they run into trouble finding siding that they come back and ask if they can change the siding? Yeah, I think we're down to, to some very small changes. If, mm -hmm. if, if you, the, it gets harder when you come in outside of a land use process to get kind of concurrence at a, even if it's a direction at a public meeting outside the land use process, you know, it. It's it's almost better to kind of pre-approve options, but um, if you want, if you have a pretty good direction of what you want, it's good to give that to them tonight because then we could be done with it. Well, yeah. If I, you I mean, don't, if you don't know yet, and you're wait, you think you need additional information both from the applicant or from the board members no longer here, then keeping it open till next month may make sense because then we can be done within the hearings process. But then they won't be able to start on anything. They're then. still in their site plan design review. They have not received their site plan design review approval. Let's, um, <clears throat> let's take an informal poll. What do you say? Okay. Okay, so I call the hearing uh, closed mm -hmm. <clears throat> and time for discussion to the mm -hmm. board. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> my proposal is that we approve it as it was originally designed with the modifications they presented tonight other than the back reveal we leave it at four and six and that if they have a problem with the four that they can come back to another meeting in the meantime they can start building and they can go ahead with the majority of the work They're, you're just talking about the siting at that point okay so because the original the original proposed changes didn't include the back siding yeah it did it four and six mm -hmm. well that's always been there mm -hmm. right so but i mean that that was not their original amendment that they wanted us to approve tonight that wasn't their original that 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 was a that was not a change that was a walk-on request that was a walk-on that was a walk-on request right so right. we could approve uh, the amendments that they proposed tonight without a problem the verbal mm -hmm. and the written but then they have the verbal addition which is going from a four and six oh, right, to right. a four to four all the way across we we have a ch choice of saying yes go ahead with that or no don't go ahead with that come back or go ahead with your amendments, leaving that aside, because they've, they've seemed to agree that they can probably do the four and six. Yeah. And if they have a difficulty with that in the future, because maybe they don't find the material. I like that option. Then they can come back at a future yeah, date. Because I, I would like to see four and six on the back. Yeah, I would too. And yeah. what do you think, John? I mean, if they're supposed to be separate, appear like separate buildings, then. Yeah, that's my feeling as well. So I propose we, we approve the plan not including the four and, the four and, four six. and six. And let them we leave it at four and six, yeah. right? So just approve the um, modifications, the as, modifications as proposed. If you want to make a, uh, move an action item, make a motion. How exactly do I do that? <laughs> <laughs> so I move. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You gotta get the number of them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong screen here. So uh, I move to appro um, approve the modification of it's HR 14 04 um, as uh, proposed. Second. <clears throat> May I, I'll amend that to be uh, as proposed, not including the verbal uh, addition of the, of the back review. Mm -hmm. Correct. Second. All right. Uh, Cindy Toll. Aye. Would you Jonathan Stone. Hmm? Oh, your vote. Oh, aye. Uh, Vice Chair Seward. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Which Why still leaves you? the option of them if in the next month they look into it and can't just can't make it work, they can come back again That's on right. just the back review. Right. Is that good for you? All right. Thank you all very much. Thank I have you. nothing to add. Bob, you beat John's record, so now you can rub it in. <laughs> <laughs>